is we can rewrite this. We can rewrite this as we're trying to find an angle. So we can say cosecant of some angle equals negative 2 square root of 3 over 3. But again, still, I don't like finding, oh no, oh, where's my trash can? I don't like finding the cosecant. Let's go ahead and rewrite this as sine. 1 over sine of theta equals negative 2 square root of 3 over 3. Right? Is, is everybody follow? Like, from here to here, this is like the basic, this is the definition, of basically, of what we're trying to find. And then I can just rewrite this in terms of sines, because like you, I'd rather deal with sines, cosines, and tangents than the reciprocal functions. And now, if we want to, if we want to go ahead and get sine by itself, we've got to get it off the denominator. So I'll multiply by sine on both sides. And by doing that, I get 1 equals negative 2 square root of 3 over 3 times sine of theta. To isolate this, I've got to multiply by the reciprocal. People keep on stealing my markers. Not you guys, but people that come to my classroom afterwards always steal my markers. So therefore, this would be 3 over negative 2 square root of 3. Because again, that's the reciprocal of this. So guess what? Those multiply to 1. And then you're left with 3 negative 2 square root of 3. Now, could we rationalize the, recipro rationalize the denominator there? We could very much so. And if we rationalize, well, let's just write out this. So therefore, I have, um, well, let's rationalize the denominator. So if we multiply by square root of 3 over square root of 3, that becomes 3. Those 3s would divide out. You're left with square root of 3 over negative 2. So I have sine of theta equals negative square root of 3 over 2. Does everybody see my mathematics that I did? No? You guys want me to show some mathematics on the side? All right, so I had 3 over negative 2 radical 3 equals sine of theta. Everybody agree with me? That's what I had here. That goes to 1, so you have sine of theta, and then that times 1, so I just have the blue. So again, multiply by the rationalize the denominator, radical 3, radical 3. So you're left with 3 radical 3 over negative 2. Radical 3 times radical 3 is just 3. So the 3's divide to 1. And then I did is I just switched the sine of theta over. So I just swapped them around. So now we're looking for the sine of what angle gives me negative square root of 3 over 2, which is really the same question as up here. Same question, just in terms of sine. Same question. So um, if we go back to the knowledge of the unit circle, when is sine going to be negative? Sine's going to be negative down in the third and the fourth quadrant, right? Yes? So I got to think, all right, when is sine going to be negative square root of 3 over 2? Well, that's going to have a reference angle of, anybody know? <coughs> we know that the angles are going to be down here, the terminal side. These points are down here. But does anybody know what the reference angle is that gives us, or the angle that gives us in the first quadrant that gives us sine of square root of 3 over 2? Pi over 3. I should probably be like, no. <coughs> so this angle pi over 3 gives us the coordinate 1 half comma square root of 3 over 2. So in the first quadrant, pi over 3 gives us the sine value of square root of 3 over 2. That's great. But guess what? We don't have positive. We have negative. So it has to be this angle, which has the same reference angle of pi over 3, or this angle, which has the same reference angle of pi over 3. So now we have to go back and know our domain restrictions for sine, which means it has to be in the first or the second quadrant. So this one, this angle doesn't work. I don't, don't even need to worry about it. I can't do this angle because then to do this angle, you have to, tr you have to travel to this, through the second and the third quadrant to get back over here. So the only angle I can do is going from here to here, which means that pi over 3 has to be negative. So my answer, theta equals negative pi over 3. Now, I showed you guys all of this work um, I showed you guys all of this work because I wanted you guys to understand it. Another way you guys could do this, rather than rewriting cosecant as 1 over sine, you could just take, what, just take the reciprocal of this. You could just say sine of theta equals 1 over negative 2 radical 3 over 3. And when you do that, when you simplify this, you're going to get negative square root of 3 over 2. Same thing. So it might be a little bit easier just rewriting it like that taking the sign of the, of the reciprocal of that value and then simplifying that way. Just another way to look at it. Yes, question? When the radical was in the denominator, I thought you did like, like you multiplied 
You can, but it's not necessary. I mean, all you're trying to do when you're rationalizing the denominator is you're trying to get rid of the radical. So, you know, for instance, if I have the fraction 3 fifths, if you want to multiply by 2 over 2, that's fine. You're not changing the fraction. You're just increasing, you know, you're just making another multiple. So it's not recommended to multiply by negative 2 because then that's just more math you're doing. But it's not going to affect the problem. The only problem is you're probably going to have to want to simplify it afterwards, right? Because if you would have multiplied it by 2, your final answer here would have been 2 over 4. Well, then you have to simplify it after that, right? So it's just easier just to do the radical and not worry about any other number. All right, so that's.